This is a patient, I can't remember the exact uh, clinical details, like the age, but basically they had a, a large uh, lesion in the bone that was, um, was uh, causing them symptoms, or maybe they even fractured through it. And when you look, the bone is completely replaced by sheets of these large cells with abundant cytoplasm, not very much atypia, but just sheets and sheets of cells with cytoplasm like this. And the bone's basically kind of destroyed and replaced by it. So what are these cells and what does this patient have a history of that I'm not telling you? Does anyone know? Can anyone recognize it? This is something that I rarely encounter in practice. But a granular cell tumor is a great idea. No, that's not what it is, but that's a good idea. One thing that helps, the cytoplasm does look kind of the same color as granular cell tumor, but granular cell tumor, usually the cells all fuse together and make a syncytial sheet. Here, you can kind of see a discrete outline of each individual cell, like they have their own distinct cell uh, membranes. Let me see if I can find the area. I think I annotated a good area. Ah, uh, yes, here. Look at that. See this kind of thin little stripes and striations? Uh, yes, this is a storage disease. Very good. And this is uh, Patricia Barrios and Mirel uh, Bolden. Uh, both get points for recognizing a, a storage disease. And yes, this is Gaucher's disease, um, which is something I rarely encounter. This is the wrinkled tissue paper, this kind of stringy fibrillary look to the abundant pink kind of fluffy cytoplasm. These are cells that are filled up. This is a liposomal storage, or a, excuse me, a lysosomal storage disease, and it's autosomal recessive, and the gene is beta glucocerebrosidase uh, mutation that's autosomal recessive um, transmission. So we all learn about this in med school. I actually wrote down the gene because it's been a long time since I've talked about it. I want to make sure I got it right. Um, but we, we learn about this in med school, but it's something that I have not encountered very often in practice. And so what happens is because that enzyme is deficient, um, glucocerebroside, beta glucocerebroside builds up in the cells, in the, the phagocytic cells, um, and um, in the histiocytes, macrophages, also in osteoclasts. And because that can cause a, a range of different problems, and there's several different subtypes, and there's a lot more to this disease. But I wanted to just show you an example because it's such a dramatic case. And, and I, I've read that they often do develop various bone problems. I think they can have avascular necrosis or bone infarcts and various things. I can't remember the exact setting here, but they knew that the patient had gauchets. They were removing this basically to stabilize the bone because I, either they had a fracture or an impending fracture, if I recall, because the, a lot of the bone was replaced by these uh, enlarged histiocytes that are filled with the, um, the material, the glucocerebroside. So a really dramatic example. And I always remembered that the pictures I had seen of these cells with the wrinkled tissue paper were blue. And that's because a lot of the times the pictures that you're seeing are from like a bone marrow biopsy when you're looking at a right heme sustain. So it's gonna stain the cells blue. This is what it looks like on H&E, on hematox, on an eosin. So I thought a pretty, a pretty great example of a un very unfortunate problematic disease.